Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Please make sure your cell phone is on silent or mute. My name is Cynthia Smith, and I will be your moderator for this evening's class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to sharing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, patterned and planned, operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. We held classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you to the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joe Turner. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia, encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would be, that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edge of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the airplane as Joshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the airplane? A further understanding of this name 
and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at the school, we teach about the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers laid in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, compelled to religions, philosophy, psychology, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. At this time we have a prayer by Dr. Anthony Oliver. Is he on? Okay, and we'll have a musical selection by Dr. Lisa Zizi. And our scripture lesson is Acts, the fifth, 15th chapter, which will be read by Dr. Carol Miller. Our scripture readers tonight are Drs. Carol Miller and Drs. Pamela Turner. Uh, good evening, class. <laughs> That's all about the hearts and minds. Uh, dear Heavenly Father Yahweh, we thank you for this opportunity that we come in your presence and that we hear your voice. Because we know that this is the end of the age and we must hear your voice in order to be saved. With all these blessings and many more, we actually only begotten sons, Yash Messiah, let's hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know to see you? Do you know how much I care? I look down through my life searching for you just to find your loving hand. Do you hear the pain I'm crying? This world is deaf to my tears. Oh, Yeshua, I am dying. Bless my heart, calm my fears. Though I know it's not so strange. 
understanding the path that follows. You paved the way, but my heart's so hard. Just take it away. I've no strength of my own. But as I commune among my brethren, and watch your fire light their eyes. They hold my arms, they hold them high. They let me know you will answer my prayer. Oh, Yahshua, don't tarry. Please, Yahshua, don't tarry. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by A.B. Train of the Scripture Research Association. Acts 15. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Saul and Barnaba had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Saul and Barnaba and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the congregation, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the nations, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the congregation and of the apostles and elders and they declared all things that Yahweh had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know 
how that a good while ago Yahweh made choice among us that the nations by my mouth should hear the word of the glad tidings and believe. And Yahweh, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye Yahweh to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of Yahshua the Messiah, we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Saul, declaring what miracles and wonders Yahweh had wrought among the nations by them. And after they had held their peace, had had, after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, "Men and brethren, hearken unto me." Simon Peter hath declared how Yahweh first proposed to take out from among, among the nations the people of his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up, the, close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build as in the days of old all the nations called by my name, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and the heathen nation, saith Yahweh, who doeth this. For known unto Yahweh are all his works from the beginning of the ages. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them, which from among, among the nations are turned to Yahweh. But that we write unto them that they abstain from the polluted offering to idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then it pleased apostles and elders with the whole congregation to send chosen men of their own company to Anakak with Saul and Barnaba, namely Judah, surname, Bersaba, and, Bersaba, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren, which are the nations in Anakak in Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we give no such commandment, to which we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Saul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Oh, sorry, I'm losing my other book. <laughs> we have sent there for uh, Judah and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from foods offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if we keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Anakok, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the exhortation. And Judah and Silas, being prophets unto themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried there a space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles, notwithstanding a plea Silas to abide there still. Saul also and Barnaba continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of Yahweh with many others also. And some days after, Saul said unto Barnaba, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we, where we have preached the word of Yahweh and see how they do. And Barnaba determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Saul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. 
and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnaba took Mark and sailed into Cyrus. And Saul chose Silas as departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of Yahweh. And he went through Syria and Cilicia confirming the congregations. That was Acts 15. Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, we're gonna have a three speaker format. And for our first speaker this evening, I'd like to call on Dr. Karen Martin. Good evening, brethren. Good evening. Good evening. It has always been a pleasure. It has always been a pleasure for me to um, give a testimony of the things that we have learned since coming to this school. And all we're doing is just a repetition of this divine vision and revelation that was given to our founder in 1931. And, um, and th that repetition has allowed us to keep in memory the things that has been taught to us from the beginning. So that's all we're doing is repetition, just repeating, repeating, repeating. And or even our natural lives is just the same because the same thing you do yesterday it's just a pattern that you get up other than the extremities that you might have, which is not, you might not plan or so on, but your daily routine, you get up, you go to the bathroom in the morning, you brush your teeth and you do the same thing over and over. And um, you're never tired of going to bed or waking up. You're never tired of that. And this is why the founder had told us, um, told the brethren back then, that you're tired of repetition, the, you know, the sun get the sun rise every morning and it sets every evening, it sets in the z set in the zenith, then it goes down in the evening and it does the same thing every day. So from creation or from history, everything is really a repetition. And when Yahweh um gave Moses, because Romans 1 19 and 20, he said he made known his ways unto, um, no, it, I think it's um, Isaiah 18, 20. He made known his ways unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. And we have come to understand that acts means his action. So everything that you realize is happening now is a repetition of what was then in the beginning. And that's why it says in, um, I think it's in Jeremiah, where it says, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it until who he who comes whose right it is. So what is overturning? It's Yahweh's purpose that has been overturning right down through the ages and dispensation. So it's all a repetition. So when you look at the scripture lesson, the apostles, the apostles were having, um, you know, they were contemplating about the circumcision because what happened, they were doing circumcision for 14, for all the years, for how many years that it was given to Moses up until their time. Because when Yeshua the Messiah came in, he came in under the law and he said he came to fulfill the things of the law. Oh, what a blessing it is when we come to understand that when the savior came, what he, his purpose and his mission, what it was for. And that is such a blessing that Yahweh has purposed us, his sons, to be privy to this information that we can just have that joy within us. And it's not a joy that we're boasting or bragging over anyone that does not know it or anyone that is not a part of this um true divine vision and revelation. We're not bragging or boasting, but we're hoping that by preaching this gospel, we are reaching out to those souls who might have never heard it. So here, um, when he said, um, when he said he made known his ways unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel, what ways did he make known unto Moses? So these apostles were keeping the law all their lives. So now you can understand why Paul was getting letter from the chief priests to go in to persecute the, the brethren 
who were not keeping the law anymore because Paul knew how important it was to keep the law. He grew up at the feet of Gamela. He was well learned. Paul was not allowed into the um into the synagogues or the um the assembly to partake of you know the 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 whole ceremonial law and so on that the children he was not allowed in because he was a eunuch and remember eunuch were not allowed in the assembly they were like outcasts but because he grew up at the feet of Gamela he was a he was a Jew so he knew what the law was because he was taught it by Gamaliel. So here, Paul, when Paul goes out and persecute him, Paul did not understand that there was a change in the law. And this is why it says the law is a schoolmaster to lead us up to Yahshua the Messiah. So if you want to see who, where, what are Yahshua's purpose, you have to go to the law and you will see it lead right up to him. Now, circumcision was given to, um, it was given back in the law, but before the law of Moses was given, circumcision was give, given to, um, to Abraham. So Abraham was the first one that received circumcision. Can you um, get me that scripture in? Um, so when it says, when Yahshua told them, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, they are they which testify of me. So, and we come to understand that the scriptures are from Genesis to Malachi. It's divided into two. The first five books of your Bible, which is the law, Genesis to Deuteronomy, and from Joshua, or we say Joshua, but truly it is Yahushua to Malachi. Those are four 39 books combined. They make up the scriptures. So when Yahshua said search the scriptures, that's what he was talking about. But then when we go to Exodus and how Yahweh set up the purpose with Moses at Exodus, when he made the exit, he made the children exit out of Egypt, he showed Moses back what happened before his time. So although the circus, even Moses himself had to be circumcised. And that is why when Moses was found by Pharaoh's daughter at the um, river's brink, they knew that he was a Hebrew child. Why? He was wrapped in Hebrew clothing and he was also circumcised. When Yahweh met Moses, uh, when Moses and his, um, I think it was his son Gershom that was not circumcised and the wife was so upset and said, bloody husband thou art because Yahweh would have killed him if he didn't circumcise. So circumcision was something that was given under the law. But before it was given to the law, it was given to Abraham. So I want you to um, get me, I think it's Genesis. Uh, let me see, Genesis, circumcision. With Abraham. It might be 17, 13. Okay. Or 17 and maybe start at nine. Okay, go ahead for me, please. Thank you. Genesis 17 and nine. Mm -hmm. And Elohim said unto Abraham, thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. Mm -hmm. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man, child among you, shall be circumcised. So it's, hold on. So it says, this is a covenant between me, Abraham, and you and thy seed. So it is Abraham's seed. And because of Abraham's seed, that Yahweh made that promise. We are a recipient of it today. So go ahead. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you mm -hmm. and, he, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you every man child in your generations he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed he that, okay mm -hmm. so even 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 if abraham bought a slave abraham had to circumcise that slave so it was a law that Yahweh gave unto Abraham. And that, that law, it was not for the female. I, I, um, it since coming to class, I was um, introduced because, you know, class allow you to do research on anything you hear. 
because you have to prove it. And when I since came since coming to class, I come to understand that fem they are circumcising female also. But you know, Lucifer is such a copycat. But Yahweh did not have the female to be circumcised. They were supposed to circumcise the male reproductive organ, the foreskin, or cut away the foreskin of the male reproductive organ. Read. Mm -hmm. Okay, where did I leave off? Was it four? I think I'm on 14, is it? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Okay, so Yahweh said they, you, that soul. Listen what he said, you know, he said that soul. So although the law was given and they were keeping this law physical, it was a type of righteousness for them, but it wasn't a righteousness for their physical body. It was a righteousness for their soul. So he said that soul shall be cut off. Read cut off from his people <laughs> he hath broken my covenant right so he said he had you had he, they have broken his covenant mm -hmm. and that shall be cut off so here circumcision was given to um to abraham but when yahweh so although when yahweh gave the 613 laws and ordinances circumcision was among them there are some laws that was given for example like you had the 10 commandment laws and you have um in the you have the 10 commandment laws you have other ceremonial laws like sacrifices and so on but these are all pointing to Yahshua the Messiah because we're going to come to understand when Yahshua came in what circumcision actually mean then that's when he wore the earth plane and what it means now to us so circumcision is not just cutting away the physical foreskin but it has a spiritual application and how do we know that we'll go back to romans 1 19 and 20 it says for that which may be known of yahweh is manifest in them manifest in who in his people the children of israel that he chose to declare his name unto to declare his purpose unto he said for yahweh had shown it unto them it says for the invisible things of him of him who of Yahweh can be clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and supernal nature so that they are without excuse who are without excuse whoever the teaching goes out and presented to they are left without an excuse we are left without an excuse also. But before you, you cannot say that you are being excused when you are, um, when it is presented to you. Yahweh has to first show it to you and so that you're left without that excuse. No, in Jeremiah 31 and verse 31, because here Yahweh, um, it was prophesied that, um, because these law were only given for a particular time and it was given to a particular group of people. So in Jeremiah 31 and verse 31, Yahweh said, um, go ahead, um, Jeremiah 31, 31. 31, 31. Mm -hmm. Behold the days come, saith Yahweh, that mm -hmm. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay, hold, hold that for me. Um, Pam, can you please go back to Genesis and read that. I want you to pick up exactly where Abraham, Yahweh told Abraham that this is a covenant between me and you and thy seed. Mm -hmm. And remember, and, and, and why I want to go back to that, I want to draw out to show when Jeremiah was speaking, I don't know if, um, when Jeremiah was um, speaking here, when it was being spoken in Jeremiah 31, 31, Jeremiah and all them back then were seed of Abraham because remember how those souls that went down into Egypt and that's where you have Israel who um, you have Jacob who actually his name was changed to Israel so these um, prophets back then came under the lines or came through the seed of Abraham because you have is Jacob had 12 sons and that's how you have the 12 tribes so go back and read where it says between my 
in in genesis on my mm-hmm. mm-hmm. genesis 17 and 9 mm-hmm. and elohim said unto abraham thou shalt keep my covenant therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations you hear that in their generation and i like to point out and show that um some the, the most of the laws are one of them actually when the name was given in in exodus 3 and 13 yahweh told moses that this is my name forever and it's a memorial unto all generation when the passover was given yahweh told them you shall keep it a feast unto your generation so there's a difference between your generation and all generation as as the name stands now here we are reading the circumcision that yahweh is telling abraham that you shall keep it throughout what your generation read this is my covenant Mm -hmm. which ye shall keep between me and you and mm-hmm. thy seed after thee. So now you understand in Jeremiah 31, 31, when it was said, behold, the days come, say it's Yahweh. It didn't say, say Jeremiah. It didn't say, say any other prophets. It says, say it's Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Why did he have to make um, distinction between, between the house of Israel and between the house of Judah? Because there was a tribal split. So he is now saying that he's gonna make a new covenant with them, not according to the old covenant that I made with the children of Israel, read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. So Yahweh is saying, which my covenant they break, read. Although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. And we can see where the covenant was broken so many times. So many times. Yahweh, I mean, when you look at it back then, yeah, um, Isaiah 66 and 4, Yahweh told them that if your righteousness were as what? A filthy rags. Remember when the law was given in, um, when it was given in Exodus, what did the children say? It shall be our righteousness. When Yahweh gave them the righteousness, it was their righteousness. But here, Yahweh is saying that he's going to make a new covenant. Why? Because the covenant, how the children of Israel kept the covenant, it was uh, they kept it like it was mess. They do any and everything against what Yahweh said. But we have to understand they could not have done anything better. They did exactly what they were designed to do. This is why they are an example for us to look at now. So we now understand, looking back, we understand why they had to do the things that they did because it was not according to the purpose of Yahweh. When you look on the dispensation chart, it was not yet appointed for the Holy Spirit to be in them, to lead them. And that is showing us today that we cannot do anything of ourselves or anything of our own without the guidance or without Yahshua in us guiding our path. Because if the children of Israel couldn't do it by themselves, there's no way that we can do it by ourselves now. And he did tell them that their sufficiency, Paul had said that your sufficiency is of Yahshua the Messiah because we cannot do anything of our own. We don't even know, as a matter of fact, how many times a simple thing as brushing our teeth we forget to do. Plenty times when we are heading out the door, we say, oh my goodness, I forget to brush our teeth. Then can you imagine if we were supposed to beat our heart? We would have forgotten <laughs> Most of we would have forgotten how many things that we've forgotten plenty of times when you left the house and you're on the road. So that is showing you, Yahweh, give us all these errors, all these things that we do in the natural to see that we are not independent of him. We are not sufficient of our own self, but our sufficiency is of him. So continue reading in Jeremiah, please. Uh, 33. Mm -hmm. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. 
So Yahweh says, this shall be the covenant that he's going to put his law in their inward part. So where was his law all along? Because they had it. It was written on tables of stone. It was read in their hearing, but they did not have a heart. And I'm not talking a biological pump because Yahweh Elohim is the heart of Yahweh. So they did not have Yahweh Elohim in them. So because they did not have the Son or the Holy Spirit in them, they did not have a heart. So there was no heart for them for it to be written in. So it was written on tables of stone. But no, when the Holy Spirit manifested in our time, he has become our heart. He is our heart mind that's directing us. And that's what is written in our heart. Read, continue reading. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, no Yahweh. For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh. For I will okay. forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So here he's saying that when the law is placed within you, and this is a prophecy, and we have seen it manifested in our time where that is being fulfilled, that the law is placed within our hearts and within our mind. So here Yahshua the Messiah came in on the scene. Because when you read Genesis, it was told that um it was told that. The child, the male child, had to be circumcised on the eighth day. Now, um, so eight days after the male child is born, the male child has to be circumcised. Now, when Yahshua the Messiah came in, he said, Matthew 5 and verse 17, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He said, for verily, verily, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one yard or one tittle shall in no wise pass until all be fulfilled. Now, I want you to get me Luke 2 and verse 21, because Yahshua said he did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Fulfill means to complete to finish, to bring to an end, and also to convert to its reality. We didn't even know that we fulfill has that meaning. We didn't do, did we even know that there was a word fulfill and it has something to do with the creator? No, we knew nothing before mm -hmm. we step into this, into these, any of these classes, nothing at all. So get me, I want you to get me Luke 2 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. Luke Two and twenty one. Mm -hmm. and, and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Yahshua, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So hold on. They gave us so you um brethren, um, you know, every time when or the witnesses or the 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 the, the this the vision and revelation, every time when it is so lined up. It is so tight. There's no loophole. We are the only one upon the face of the earth. And I will say that without an apology that will stand in the presence of any religious heads, any. I don't care which theological colleges they have been to or whoever, whoever had passed whatever on them. We are the only one that can stand up and declare Yeshua and prove it. A lot of people will get up and say, oh, I know the name Yeshua because it's Yeshua or Yahweh. Can they prove it? No, they can't. They cannot. So here they took away the Bible, the old, the, the from, they took away the law and the prophets. And they gave us what you call the so-called New Testament. And notice I said so-called because from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John down, that is not the New Testament. Wow, there are so many things that we are we have come to understand. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is not the New Testament. because And we have come to understand that a testament is a force after men are dead. What is a testament? Testament, it is a what you call a um a will 
So a testament is like a will. Once a person is alive, it is of no use. We see where persons have will things to um, family members and in order for them to get whatever the, is willed, the, 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 the person, the testator had to die. What you see these people do? They go and they kill the testator. Some of them kill their parents or whoever is the testator because they cannot get it unless the person die. We didn't know these things. So when you just look at people leaving will and people, we didn't even know that was in the scripture and we can understand it. So here they took away from Genesis to Malachi and they gave us what we called the so-called New Testament. Now somebody might be just reading um, Luke 2 and verse 21 where the child was born, that's Yahshua was born and eight days after he was born, he was circumcised. What are they understanding? You understand what are they understanding? No, do you see how Yasha said, search the scriptures for in them you think um, you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. So now we see where Yahshua came in on the scene. He was circumcised on the eighth day. Now look how many other disciples that was mentioned in the law and the prophets. But when it comes to Yahshua, because I'm sure many, I'm sure some of them, like John the Baptist, and when he was circumcised and the father named Zachariah, and they had, you know, the Zachariah, they call him different name because the naming was always at the circumcision. Now, we know that some of them it might mention in the Bible, but when it comes to Yahshua, it, it's a must that it had to be mentioned and it had to be declared because Yahshua told them, search it, search the scriptures. It is talking about me or it is testifying of me. So this, so Yahshua was circumcised eight days after he was born. Read that again for me, please. Luke 2 and 21, and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Yahshua, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So you see that before Yahshua was even conceived in the womb, Yahweh named him. Before he was even born, Yahweh named him. He said the angel, that same angel who appeared unto Moses in the burning bush, that's Yahweh Elohim. And he named the child, he named him Yahshua. So who are we today? We were not even around. We didn't even understand anything that there is a creator. Who are us today? to be naming or changing his name. Do you come and change your parents' name? My, how dare my children to come and want to change my name? No, you don't come and change your father's name or your mother's name. And whatever name you are born under, that's the name that you use. If you want to change it when by doing deed poll later on, that's fine. But you never ever change your parents' name. Unless they want you to do that. And I've never heard of that. So here, Yahshua, at his naming, or in, at his circumcision, his name, he was, um, his name was called Yahshua. And it was done eight days after Yahshua was, um, was, was born. So he was circumcised on the eighth day, fulfilling what was given to Abraham that he, he shall circumcise or cut away the foreskin of the male reproductive organ. Now, when you look at um, circumcision, so here they were having a problem with um, circumcision and they were wondering, you know, the, um, in Acts the 15 chapter, they were saying, saying to themselves, you know, we should have circumcised because, you know, it's like you've been doing it all this time. And just like when Paul, just like when Peter, they had been baptizing all this time. And then afterwards, when he went down um, and he met the Ethiopian, uh, when, when um, was it? Uh, no, it was, uh, yeah, it was the baptism where he was talking about, um, was it um, the one Philip. to, no, I know, that's not the one I'm talking about with Philip. Oh, okay. I wanted, uh, I was thinking of um, where Yahshua brought it back. 
to um, Peter's remembrance and he said, then remembered I. Where when he, Yes, the same baptism. When he was saying, can any man forbid water that he should be baptized? But just as he said it, Yahshua had to bring it back to his remembrance. And he did tell, him, tell them in John 14, 24, that I will bring back all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So he caused Peter to make that error and to bring it back to his remembrance to show that I am a man of my word. I will bring it back to your remembrance. So here, that's the same thing. So they were here contemplating about circumcision. I wanted to pick up the part where um, one of the um, apostles were saying, you, you, do you want to put the yoke on them? You know what yoke mean? It's a burden. It's a heavy weight. That used to be on us and we couldn't even keep it. Um, the same chapter in Acts. <laughs> I think it's, um, let's see. Oh. Or is it the same chapter as the, can any man forbid water or is the scripture? No, the scripture lesson that we oh, were the, reading. Oh, the scripture. Okay. Yes. The 15th chapter. Yes. Okay. Let's see. What verse is that? With the yoke, I don't, oh, wait, put a yoke, it's 10. Now, therefore, why tempt ye yellow? Him? Okay, so I want, since it is 10, I want you to read, right? So I want you to read where, um, the start from the sixth verse. Six, and the apostles and elders came together. Fifth, sorry about that. Go to the fifth verse. Fifth. Mm -hmm. There arose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So you hear, they were saying that there is a need that we circumcise them and they keep the law of Moses. Now, this is after Pentecost. Read. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. So you see, they, I, I, and that's the same thing. We're having issue, we don't understand. Just use these as example. Come together to see how best we can reason it out. That is showing it's the same thing. And don't we see that happen all the time, even in our schools? When we have issue, we are not able to sort it out. We come together and we reason it out. Let us go back to the law and the prophets and see what Yahshua said about it. Let us go to Dr. Kinley's lecture, see what he left on record. Let us, you understand? So this is what we do. And this is exactly what they were doing. Read. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago Elohim made choice among us. So he's saying that, listen, you know how Yahweh Elohim made choice among us. And we saw where he made choice among them when he, Yahshua chose them as his disciples and they later become apostles. And remember, there's a difference between disciples and apostles. Disciples walk with Yahshua and the, uh, the apostles are witness, true witness to the, um, to, 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 to the, the spiritual revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. So, but the same disciples, they became apostles except Judas. Read. That the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the good news and believe. So you see, it says the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So that's all they had to do, you know, believe, because that's what Paul told them in 1 Corinthians 15, that I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I have also received. And all you have to do is receive it and believe it. Believe is not a negative word. It's a strong word. Because believe it is to have faith, to acknowledge, read. And Elohim, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us. So here, here Peter is saying that, listen, Yahweh knoweth the heart, and he bear witness, giving them, the Gentiles, the Holy Spirit, even as he gave it to unto us. Because that happened to them on the day of Pentecost, read. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. So you see, and, and that's what the scripture said. Yah, Yahshua brought down the middle wall of partition between Jews and Gentiles. So you're neither bond nor free. That's why when you look at the seventh 
the second aim, it says, is it the uh, second aim to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood. And even in our time, there is something that is still guiding us along the path of righteousness because the founder left it in the second aim to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, creed, sex, cast our color so as what peter is saying here no is no different from the second aim that dr kinley left on record this is why dr kinley said if i come preaching or teaching anything other than what the law the prophets or other than what the apostle paul and all them that had the vision see i am a false prophet don't believe me and because we everything that the founder had left on record can be tested and proven by the law the prophets where can we go but right under this teaching and continue preaching the gospel? So here it says, um, Yahweh, he said, put no difference between us and them, purify their hearts by faith. And that's what how the Gentiles were engrafted in, by faith. Read. Now, therefore, why tempt ye Elohim to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? What? Are you, you know, you do, you do we really? And you see, I can understand no. I really, really can understand no. When the Gentiles, which have not the law, like myself, who had it, who did not know anything about the law before, do unto nature the things contained in the law. These having not the law are a law unto themselves. Now here Peter is saying, no. Therefore, why test Yahweh to put a yoke upon the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? That's a question Peter is asking, you know. You know what a yoke is? A yoke is that burden, that thing that you put on the oxen to carry the load. Why are you weight giving them that heavy load? We couldn't even bear it ourselves. How, how do you know that they couldn't bear it? A child that is born eight days after and that eight day falls on the Sabbath, which law would they break to keep? Would they break the law of circumcision by go keeping the Sabbath and not circumcising the child? Or would they break the law of the, 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 the Sabbath by keep it by, you know, whichever one. You keep one, you break one, you break one, you, you keep the other. So, you know, that's what he was saying. We were not able to bear it. Read. But we believe that through the grace of Yahshua the Messiah, we shall be saved, even as they. He said, we believe that through the grace of Yahshua the Messiah, we shall be saved, even as they. And how do you, that's what Peter is saying. That's why it says, for by grace are we saved, through faith, not of works. Lest any man should boast. So Joe cannot be over there saying, oh, I am the dean and I was circumcised. And then you hear Anthony on the next side say, boy, I wasn't circumcised. No, those are fleshly carnal things of the flesh. It's good to be circumcised because now we have proven where they said circumcision will help you to detect any, um, what you call any STI at an early stage. And also when you're circumcised, you know, when you're circumcised, it's considered clean and you're freshly instead of when you're not. So here it's not where I am circumcised over that person. No, that's not what it is all about. Read. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders Elohim had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Mm -hmm. And after they held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Mm -hmm. Simeon hath declared how Elohim at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to, to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. And here in the 14th verse, people are telling you today that what is in a name. But here it is saying that Yahweh first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name, not for those idols name that are given to him. This is why we will not bow. We will not use, and it doesn't matter which presence we are. We will not use Lord God and Jesus Christ to please anyone. We will not. We must declare the name Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. 
Because Yahweh, she said, Yahweh chose a Gentile one, a people unto them for his name. That my name may be glorified. That's what he did when he raised up Pharaoh. Read. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, after this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build up again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. That the residue of men might seek after Yahweh and all the Gentiles, upon mm -hmm. whom my name is called, saith Yahweh, who doeth all these things. Mm -hmm. No one unto Elohim are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned to Elohim. Mm -hmm. That we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased it, the apostles and elders with the whole assembly to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnaba, namely Judah, surnamed Bersaba, and Silah, chief men among the brethren. Read the 24th verse. 24th, for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandments. So here he's saying that we gave no such commandments. So after they have come sit and reason it out, they have gone back to the law because they went back to Moses and they were saying that we ourselves, because remember they were under the law of Moses. So once they're talking about that, they said they couldn't keep it themselves. So they have gone to show that they themselves could not keep it. And because they could not keep it, Yahshua came and he took it out of the way because that circumcision is really talking about something that is spiritual. I want you to get me, um, I want you to get me where it says um, circum, Romans 2 and verse 25. Romans 2 and 25. Mm -hmm. For circumcision... Well, now, before you before you get that, get me Jeremiah 4 and verse 4. Because in the prophets, Jeremiah did just as how Jeremiah in the prophets where Yahweh told him that he was going to take away the old covenant. In Jeremiah 4 and verse 4, this is what um, Yahweh says. Jeremiah 4, 4. Circumcise yourselves to Yahweh and mm -hmm. take away the foreskins of your heart. You so you see, and remember Jeremiah, that's a prophet. What a prophet does prophesy so he was prophesying of something so he's saying you're there circumcising your foreskin you people are there circumcising your foreskin and you it is ain't no good it ain't done done any good for you so he's saying circumcise your circumcise yourself to Yahweh and take away the foreskin of your heart now Jeremiah started going internally because remember, circumcision was the first thing of the reproductive organ, which is external. So Jeremiah is now sending them on the inside. Say, take away the foreskin of your heart. Read. Ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. So here, it's a prophecy that the circumcision, they must circumcise the foreskin of your heart. And you know that we are not talking about the biological pump because I, I really don't know if somebody circumcising that. Um, I think I remember Joe was speaking about something of that the last time where you have a circumcision of the heart, but it has nothing to do with any religious or anything pertaining to Yahweh where you cut physically do a circumcision of your heart. Romans 2.25. For circumcision, verily, profiteth, if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Mm -hmm. Go on. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? Hmm. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, 
Mm-hmm. If it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. Mm-hmm. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not of the letter whose praise is not of men, but of Yahweh. So- so it says, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. And we can all testify that today, sitting right here in class, we are considered Jew. That's a blessing that we are being engrafted into the, 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 the family of Yahshua. And we are a Jew. We are Jew. So he said, we are not, a, there's one is not a Jew, which is outward, neither circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. He said, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart. So you hear it says that of the heart, but it says in the spirit, because we have a spirit mind or a spirit heart. He said, not of the letter. What letter is it talking about? The letter of the law. He said, whose praise is not of men, but of Yahweh. So so here it is saying that circumcision is that of the heart and not of the flesh. Get me, um, Rome, oh, you just um, read that, Romans 2. Mm -hmm. But you just read that. Get me Philippians 3 and 3. Philippians 3 and oh. Philippians 3 and 3. Mm-hmm. For we are the circumcision which worship Yahweh in the spirit and rejoice in Yahshua the Messiah and have no confidence in the flesh. So, brethren, there are many scriptures that we can get on this circumcision, but it's showing that circumcision is t- tearing away the flesh, the fleshly concept in our time now. It's cutting away the fleshly concept of our heart or our mind. What concept circumcised me to cut away? Are you seeing where we are being circumcised daily? Some of us are in class for over 40 years. Some of us are in class ever since class was in, in the inception. Some of us walk with the founder. And that's, they are being circumcised daily. Daily, those concepts are being um, torn apart. Daily, we are being cleansed. We are being circumcised. You will not hear, you will not hear us saying, Lord of mercy, oh my God. No, because what? He has circumcised our heart. He said, for I will take away the names of Balaam out of your mouth and you shall no more be remembered by that name. So five minutes, here, Karen. Five minutes, repeat. okay? Yes. Five minutes. Mm-hmm. Right. So here, Yeshua has taken away that he has circumcised our heart, circumcised our heart mind, so that what happened? We are being made clean before him we are now of a what circumcised lips why we are not saying the old things that we um were taught that we were raised up under we have what you call the, the we have this festive season that's coming up christmas season we don't celebrate christmas and i saw somebody was having um having some discussion on facebook about that sometimes i wonder why they bother to take that on Facebook because other people are looking on and so on. But anyway, we don't celebrate those things. And I, 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 um, I heard that people would say, oh, I'm just doing it for the children. That's nonsense. Because back then under the law, whatever the parents do, they, they have to keep the children in that line also. Because Yahweh told Moses, teach it unto your children, children, children. So don't tell me because, oh, the children like to see the gifts and they're dangling about the place. You do it for the children. That's hypocrisy. Because if Yahweh didn't like it then, he still don't like it now. Because what is this whole Christmas and festivity about? About pagan worship, about idol worshiping. So these are some of the things that Yahweh circumcised our heart and mind with. But guess what? That cannot happen 
unless Yahshua the Messiah is being resurrected in your heart and your mind. Or how the whole founder put it, the Holy Spirit that's latent in man. So when that Holy Spirit, when the gospel is being preached unto you and you are being a true recipient, you accept the, the gospel that is being preached and you become a recipient of it, the Holy Spirit resurrected in your mind will just start cutting away those things, circumcising all those things. And that's what the true circumcision is. The cutting away those carnal fleshly concepts that we once believe that that's the way we it, that's the way we go to worship the creator. But no, it says salvation is of the Hebrews and one is not a Jew, which is one outward, but one inward. Get me Colossians 1 and verse 26. Colossians 1 and... Um... 23, did you say? 26, Colossians 1 and verse 26. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his sons. So brethren, we have to be eternally grateful. And I cannot overemphasize on this anymore. We have to be eternally grateful because these things were mystery unto us. They are no longer mystery. So when we read the scripture, we, 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 we are humbled. It's no longer a mystery. It says it is now made manifest to his sons. Yahweh caused you to see that and understand it. You are a, a son and a son of righteousness. Because guess what? Lucifer ain't going to see these things and acknowledge them. So he has to be a son of righteousness. So continue to give Yahshua the glory. Read. To whom Elohim would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the gentiles which is the messiah in you the only hope of glory so it says yashua the messiah in you so the riches of the glory is not about how much money you have in the bank how much money you earn or that's the riches that people you know how christianity nowadays is preaching wealth and health that's not the riches that it's talking about the riches is <laughs> yashua in you and that's your only hope of glory it says whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every soul perfect in yashua the messiah and the day that you exit this flesh that soul is perfect going on over into in, 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 into the new earth state because guess what yashua is not going to take his son out of the flesh without first having him cleanse circumcised to move on over into the new age. And because of this teaching, I am eternally grateful. And to sit here and to share a testimony that Yahweh has taken me out of darkness and to bring us into this marvelous light. Brethren, it's a blessing. It's an honor and a glory. And I am humble at his calling. All praises go to Yahweh Elohim. Three son, Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, well... Um... We were going to have a three speaker format, but <laughs> Karen was uh, on a roll, so I gave her extra time. Um, uh, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to be the second speaker for this evening. So you guys can uh, possibly relax. I don't know. It's, a, it's up to Joshua. So um, what Karen was explaining is an absolute mystery to the world out here. Every religion on the on the planet earth okay let's just let's just stay with christianity for right now but every religion out here uh, especially christianity they they teach nothing but do's and don'ts okay they teach uh they, they teach carnal ordinances and 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 it's really kind of hard for us as people you see in living in this creation and 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 this this creation is a carnal or physical existence and then when i say carnal i don't mean spirit i, I don't mean uh, uh sexual i mean that it is physical it is natural okay and every place in this creation you know for example um i went to work today and i met with my boss and went over my projects and all that kind of stuff okay now am, am i doing this because uh, out of the charity of my heart? No, I'm not doing it for any other reason than I am getting a paycheck, all right? And, and it's, it's, it's just showing forth the example that we are so used to uh, doing something and getting something for it, all right? And that that idea, okay, we carry into, uh, into religion. 
Okay, you go to church because you think that you're getting, you see, we used to, we used to call it Christ credits, okay? That, that people think that they're getting cred with the creator for doing things like going to church, okay? Helping old ladies across the sidewalk or old men across the sidewalk, giving tithes, getting baptized. And the reason people are doing that is they think by doing these physical, natural, carnal things. Could you put up the uh, ages, or not the ages chart, the, uh, the, the, the uh, covenants chart, please? They think that by doing these physical things, that they are somehow uh, earning, you see, credit with the creator, and that, they, that, that, that these, doing these physical, natural things are going to save their soul. Now, how can something physical, okay, save you spiritually? It just doesn't make any kind of sense, okay? Now, what Karen was talking about, in, and she was, did a beautiful job, I thought, was explaining, okay, really kind of the dilemma that the, that the apostles were running into, you see, after uh, uh, the, the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, because Yahshua was gone. Oh, and by the way, I just want to throw this out. She mentioned Christmas. The apostles, you, you, you don't read where the apostles or anybody, you see, in the Bible celebrated Christmas, okay? other than the actual birth of the Messiah, where he was given gifts, and that was in fulfillment of scriptures, okay, by the, uh, by the wise men, okay, people say there was three wise men, it doesn't say actually how many wise men there were, there were three gifts, okay, so they assume that there were three wise men, there could have been two, there could have been 10, and they just, you know, pitched in, all right, but, <laughs> but you see, it, people have all these ideas, about God and, and, and how to worship him. And every single one of them is, spirit, is not spiritual. It is natural. It is physical. It is carnal. Now, actually, um, uh, I'm going to come back to this chart. Could you give me the Moses chart again, please? Now, Karen was showing how that circumcision was initiated actually back uh, at the time of Abraham. And Abraham was some 400 years before uh, Israel came up out of the land of Egypt, all right? And so, so this is quite a long time. And during that whole time, you see, the main way that you uh, knew and that you celebrated, you see, that you were a child of Abraham and you were part of that covenant that Yahweh made with him was to be circumcised. Now, in fact, okay, Paul picks up in Romans that circumcision was first, you see, or the, the covenant with Abraham was first given to him. And then later, as a sign of the covenant, circumcision was, was given to him. So really, in actuality, the covenant was originally given to Abraham when he was uncircumcised. All right. And, and, and Yahweh says that, that he said, look up into the sky, see the stars, see, and, and the sands of the sea, so, so shall be his offspring, okay? And then, you see, at later, later on, you see, added, what was added to that covenant, because at first it was just a promise that he would be Abraham's Elohim, and that Abraham's seed, you see, would, you see, that Abraham would be the father of many nations, and Yahweh changed his name from Abram which means father to Abraham, which means father of many nations, okay? So you see, Yahweh first made a covenant with Abraham and then later on had the circumcision. So that original covenant was given to him when he was in uncircumcision even, okay? I, let me pick that up. That's actually in Romans, uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, Romans, I think the eighth chapter. Okay. Maybe it's uh, the fourth chapter. Okay. Um, yeah, pick it up. Pick it up at four and one, please. Romans four and one. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, is pertaining to the flesh, hath found? 
For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before Yahweh. You see, it doesn't matter what your works are. You see, none of us make the cut as far as righteousness is concerned. You see, I'm not getting feedback. Okay. Um, none of us, you see, can can glor be be glorified. Even Abraham, he he was not justified by his works before Yahweh. Okay. See, we're talking about grace, unmerited reward here. All right, go ahead, please. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed Yahweh, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So just Abraham believing in Yahweh was accounted for him for righteousness. Not his works, not what he did, just that he believed Yahweh. And Yahweh put that in his heart to believe him, by the way. Abraham couldn't even work up on that. Okay, go ahead. Now okay. to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. You see, that's what I was saying. Now, if you're working, okay, now that, just take it from a natural standpoint. If you're working, then the person that you are working for, the company you are working for, they owe you a debt, or in other words, a paycheck. But, but so, so and, and, and it's funny that Yahweh uses these words, that he calls the stuff that was done under that law Okay, because you see that covenant was given to Abraham, and then later you see uh, a, a more uh, extensive covenant was given to his offspring, and that is the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. Okay, and when you kept those laws, for example, the Ten Commandments, if you you see didn't take his name in vain, and that you honored your father and your mother, and you didn't covet your your husband's wife or your, your, your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's oxen, whatever, you see, all those things that were under that old covenant, those were referred to as the works of the law. So you see the relationship that you are doing work thinking that you are gaining something. But the fact of the matter is, is that nobody was able to keep that law. Okay, <laughs> you just look at those Ten Commandment laws. Uh, most of us have broken the, the vast majority of them. Okay, uh, you, you see, it's it's just it's just not in our nature to keep those things. So these are works of the law. Other works of the law are circumcision, our baptisms, our uh, uh, Lord's suppers. Okay, our um, there a priesthood. You see. Uh, sacrifices. You see, all all these things were the works of the law. Now, to, now, so read that again, verse four, please. Now, to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So, if you are under that old covenant, that that agreement back there under the law. Now, look at that chart. Okay. Now, now, if you could just zoom in to to Moses there. See what happened was is when the children of Israel came up out of Egypt, Yahweh, you see, see they're camped around the base of Mount Sinai. They came to Mount Sinai in, in Arabia, all right, which is in the, on the Sinai Peninsula. And it's between Israel and pre present day Israel and uh, 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 Egypt. And so Moses and 70 elders and also Aaron's, uh, uh, Moses' brother Aaron and, and Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, you see, we're called up to the midpoint of that mountain. And then Moses went up to the top of the mountain and he received, you see, the tables of the law written with the hand of Elohim. And on those tables were the Ten Commandment laws. Okay, now this sounds really familiar to us, you see. Now, now when, 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 uh, when, when Karen was reading Gentile, a Gentile is anybody who is not a Jew. Okay, so... So if if you're a German, if you're if you're from if if you're from anywhere in Europe, okay, and not originally from the Middle East or not a physical Jew, you are a Gentile. If you're uh, if you're uh, Asian, you're you're a Gentile. If you're from Africa, you're a Gentile. Okay, and see any anybody except a, a Jewish person or that is a Hebrew, a a a, a, a uh, a direct descendant of Abraham, okay, 
that if you are a Hebrew, see, uh, that that law was for you. That was given to you. You were invited to that party to keep that law. Okay, if you were a Gentile, if you were not Jewish, you were never asked, no matter what your preacher says, no, what, no matter what your minister says or guru or whatever, no matter what they say, those laws were not given to you to keep unless you're a Jewish. Those were the only people that were invited to that mountain. Okay. Now, some of the Egyptians actually came up out of Egypt with the children of Israel. And those Egyptians, before they could, you see, partake of that law, they had to convert and become a Jew and be circumcised, by the way, and baptized. All right. So everybody back there at that Mount Sinai was a Jew. So they were given the Ten Commandment laws. Now, when I went to church and I was raised a Baptist, okay, when I went, when I went to church, they told me that God said I had to keep the Ten Commandments. Now, that was a damn lie. And I mean damn and not to be vulgar, but you see, that is damnable. That is something that you could lose your soul over. That is a lie that can cause you, you see, to, to uh, not inherit eternal life. You see, that's what that was. It was never given to, to us Baptists to keep. It was only given to the Jews. Now, also under that law were another 300 or 603 ordinances. And so making a total of, I think, 313 uh, total ordinances. So you had the Ten Commandments. You had circumcisions. You had Lord's Suppers, which was actually a commemoration of the Passover, which they did down in Egypt. All those things, you see, that we were told in church, and, and by the way, the Passover was only once a year. The Lord's Supper was only once a year. Why are people keeping it every Sunday? Catholics can go and do the Lord's Supper every day of the week. They can go to Mass, okay, and that they can partake of the host. You see, uh, you see all those things, you see, that were under that law, you see, uh, the Christians and Christianity, you see, and I'm not down on Christians, you see. I'm see see we're not down on 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 people. We're down on the doctrines that are being perpetuated out here in the world, and 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 whether you realize it or not, and you should begin to realize this, having come into this class, okay, and 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 have heard a few things, you should realize. And you should be mad about this, that you have been lied to your entire life concerning your creator. Now, think about it. We're being lied. We're, you, you, you find out all the time. We had our, our great recession, right? Because they were lying to us about the economy. All right. They're lying to us. Do, do politicians lie? They sure do. Okay. <laughs> okay. You see, I, I don't care Biden or Trump. They're both a couple liars. OK, it don't matter. It's it's part and parcel with these guys. They, You see, and, and they may they see they may call it stretching the truth or whatever, but they want to tell people what they want to hear. If someone tells you, see, gets up there and it's all doom and gloom, nobody's going to want to vote for them. So they got to lie to you. So you've been lied from a political standpoint. You've been lied, you see, to about the financial things. And you have been lied to, you see, concerning uh, uh and I'll say this for myself, everything I was ever taught concerning God before I came down into this class was a lie. I wasn't taught his true name. I was, I was taught I should be circumcised, which, I wasn't, which wasn't given to me. I was told I had to be baptized. Okay. Um, um, and, and you, you see, uh, uh, you, I was a Baptist, <laughs> you know, that was a lie. Okay. All the things that I was taught concerning my creator was a lie. All right. The purpose of the Messiah. I was told that Jesus came to institute a Christian way of life. Now you will find that nothing that Jesus, who we know now is Yahshua, and those names are not, those names are not 
uh, interchangeable. Jesus does not mean the same thing as Yahshua. And Yahweh says that it's the only name that you can be saved in. Now, that's a pretty big difference between that and Jesus. Everything I was taught my entire life concerning God was wrong and was a lie. Okay? Now, now and, and you see, we can prove those things. All right? No place, okay, can you find where the apostles told the Gentiles that they had to be circumcised. No place did the apostles water bat that you can't find a place where any Gentile after, you see, after the day of Pentecost, you see, after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the bringing in of that new covenant, you see, no place was a Gentile water baptized. You see, you just won't find that. And, and see, the, 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 this is this is what, for those of you who have been around, this is what the founder taught. You see, he taught these same things, and 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 it's and it comes right out of the book. So now, now, like I said, this law was given to Israel, and yet everything that we were doing in church was pretty much a copycat of a law that was given to somebody else. Okay, now. I want to get back to to where I, I that, that was a pretty pretty substantial sidetrack. Let's get back to Romans and let me finish that. Uh, pick it up at four again. Romans four and four. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. Go ahead. But to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now you see, it's not that we're able to do the works of the law. It is that Yahshua has justified us, the ungodly, okay, and has counted, you see, our faith in Yahweh, you see, for righteousness. Go ahead. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom Yahweh imputeth righteousness without works, saying... See? Blessed, blessedness of a man to whom Yahweh imputeth means to impute means to put within or to give. Okay, so he imputeth righteousness without works, without the works of the law, without the Ten Commandments, without baptism, without Lord's suppers, without water baptism. Okay, okay, verse seven, please. Saying, "Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered." See, it's not that you're able to be righteous. It's that you are forgiven and your sins are covered by him. Go ahead. Blessed is the man to whom Yahweh will not impute sin. Go ahead. Cometh the blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? See, this blessedness came upon the circumcision and the uncircumcision. Okay, go ahead. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? You see, when was that covenant originated? It was before Abraham was circumcised. Okay? So he was given that, that righteousness before he was physically circumcised. Not after. All right? He was given it in, you see... Uh, when when he was in uncircumcision, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Okay, uh, go ahead. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncir uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Okay, keep going. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. Okay. So you see that that righteousness goes upon the circumcised and the uncircumcised. And that you see that 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 you see <laughs> that that circumcision was just a sign. It was a type. It was a shadow. It was an example 
of something else. You see, as something better that Yahweh had in store because people were not able to, you see, I mean, if you're honest with yourself, you see, you weren't able to keep that law, you see. And, and you know, also, you see, just think of it this way too, okay? Um, let me let let me give you an example. All right, uh, go over to uh, um, Matthew the nineteenth chapter and pick it up at verse sixteen. I was reading this the other day. Matthew nineteen sixteen. You have it, Mom. Uh, yeah. Um, and behold, one came and said unto him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is Elohim. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Now, this is before Yahshua brought the old covenant to an end. Now, actually, hold your fingers here. I need to prove that statement. Uh, get me uh, Matthew 5 and 17, okay? Uh, and I want um, John 3 and 36. And I also want Romans 10 and 4. Okay, now, out here in Christianity, okay? Now, I'm not down on Christians. We, I was a Christian. You see, my mother was a Christian, okay? But we didn't know what the truth was, okay? We didn't, you see, we didn't understand. So, so I'm, I'm not saying that this is, this is your fault for not knowing these things. I'm just trying to tell you the truth, okay? And that there, there is some contrast out here in the world. Now, in Christianity, they teach that Jesus came to institute a Christian way of life. Now, no place. Does it say that Jesus came to start anything? When he was baptized by John, he wasn't the first person baptized. You see, John had been baptizing, you see, for a long time. As a matter of fact, it said that all of Israel came to John to be baptized. And then came Yahshua. See, he wasn't even the first one John baptized. Besides which, you see, baptism went on back there with Moses. You have in 1 Corinthians uh, the 10th the chapter, and I'll read it real quick, 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So all of Israel back there was baptized, you see, 1,500 years before John baptized anybody, okay? And, 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 and you go back, you see, there, 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 have been, there have been baptisms all the way down through the Law and the Prophets. And then they came up and were baptized in, in the Jordan River. And so John, when he's baptizing, he is, you see, he, he is doing this and he is fulfilling things that were under the law, okay? Now, uh, uh, go, go back to where you were over there in Matthew. Of, was it five and seventeen? Um, um, think are, not. Is that what you call? Yes. yes, five and seventeen. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to just to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, fulfill. If you look up fulfill, okay, and I have the definition written down right here. It says to fill the requirements of, to bring to an end, to complete. You see, see, fulfill means to finish or to end. Institute means to begin or start, okay? If, if you're a runner, okay, and, and, and they, they fire the gun at the beginning, that's the institution of the run. Now, when you've run that 5K, okay, now I've run a few 5Ks in recent years, when, when I get to that finished line, okay, it's fulfilled or it's finished, it's ended. Now, I have just run for 30 minutes as hard as I could. 
If you told me, oh no, this isn't the this isn't the finish. This is the beginning. I'll say no, it's not. It's the be it's the end. At least it's the end for me. You see, you don't want to keep running after you've run that 5K. You see, you are done. You see, Yahshua said that he came in to fulfill. He, he, he came in to finish. Now you have uh, John 3 and, and 36. John 3, 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Elohim abideth on him. Okay, uh, try 3 and 39. There is no 3 and 39. I'm sorry, John 5 and 36, okay? John so 5 and 36? Yeah. John 5, 36. That's it, yeah. That's but it. I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father hath given me to finish. The same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Now, he didn't say he came to start anything. He said he came in to finish. Okay. He came in to bring it to an end. And, and what he came in to fulfill was those works. Okay. That's what he says here. The works which the Father has given me to finish. What works? The works of the law, the Ten Commandments, water baptism, circumcision suppers, a priesthood, ceremonies, all those things, Yahshua came in and he fulfilled it. Now, do you have Romans 10 and 4, please? Yeah, Romans 10 and 4. For the Messiah is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Actually, pick it up at one, please. Okay, Romans 10 and 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. Uh -huh. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. You see, people here in the world, in Christianity, you see, they have a zeal. A zeal means an enthusiasm for, okay? They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They don't know how to worship him. I did not know how to worship him. You see, I thought that, you see, we had to worship him the way that the Yahweh set it up with Israel. But that law, like I said, was never given to me. You see, it, it, now I had a zeal, but I didn't know how to worship Yahweh. It was not according to knowledge. Go ahead. For they being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness. Now they are ignorant. Now this is, this is Paul talking here. That people are ignorant or they don't know, you see, Yahweh's righteousness. So what do they do? Go ahead. And going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. You see, this is what's going on in the world. People are ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness. So they go about to establish their own righteousness. And the way they do this is, like I said, Ten Commandments, circumcisions, Lord's suppers, water baptisms, a priesthood, all these things. You see, they've gone about to establish their own righteousness, but they have not, it says, submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. Okay, now go, please. Keep for reading. the Messiah is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Okay, so that Yahshua, he was the end of the law. He came to finish it, to end it, because you see, uh, because uh, because under the works of the law, okay, there was none righteous. Nobody was able to keep that, you see, that old covenant. Nobody was able. Even, even Moses, okay, was disobedient to Yahweh at one point in time, okay? You see, all those, you see, back there with Moses, before Moses, and you see down through the prophets too, you see, there was, you see, it says in your scriptures that there is none righteous, no, not one. Does it? Do, do you guys know where that is? Okay, I can find it for 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 you guys later. So so go back to that carnal ordinance chart, please. Okay, now zoom in a little bit. Okay, so you have here, you see, you have at the top of the chart, you have the Old Testament. Okay. 
or the old. See, a, a, a covenant is an agreement. A testament and a covenant are the same thing. So you have the Old Testament on the left. And then on the right, you have the New Testament. Now, under the Old Testament, you had what were called carnal ordinances. Okay, that's what Yahweh called them. Carnal means physical, natural ordinances. So we have the things that, that, that Karen was talking about and the things that I've been talking about. You have back there that circumcision. You have, you see, ceremonies, okay? You see, you, in, in, in Catholicism especially, they have these ceremonies that they do, okay? And they're done by a priest, okay? You have baptisms. Now, now look at baptism too, okay? In Catholicism, who do they baptize? They baptize babies, okay? Now, John baptized people unto repentance, okay? And he would ask them if they had sinned. So why are they baptizing a baby who has not sinned? What they say is, is they say that that baby has received the, the sin of Adam, and they call it original sin. First of all, there's nothing original about sin. Okay, I don't know why they call it that. But you see, Yahshua fulfilled that in prophecy of Daniel. That he, it says that, you see, in Daniel, it, it says that, you see, that Yahshua uh, would come, you see, that the, 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 the Messiah would come, and that, that see, and, and it says, it, it talks about how, uh, uh, you see, I, I don't have time to get into all this, but, but basically it says that he would bring an end to sin. And the sin that he that's being discussed there in Daniel is that sin that mankind inherited from Adam. Okay, that is that that's see Joshua when he came in he came in to bring an end to all that. So you see the the Catholics they baptize babies. Okay, uh, in 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 Baptist religion. Okay, I decided all by myself when I was eight years old that I was going to get water baptized. Okay, now. The Jehovah Witnesses, okay, I, I remember uh, there was an article that uh, someone brought to class one time that they used a fire hose, okay? Some people, they'll go, okay, and they think that they're going to, they're, they're walking in Jesus's footsteps. So they'll actually spend the money, fly to Israel, and get baptized in the Jordan River. But you see, to fulfill Yahshua, wouldn't they have to be baptized by John the Baptist? Okay, if they're following in his footsteps, if they're doing what he said, they'd have to be baptized by John the Baptist. Okay, so, so they're still falling short. Okay, and Passovers, you see, Passover is the Lord's Supper. When the Messiah, you see, was, was, was commemorating the Passover, he was bringing it to an end. He was finishing all the works that were back there under the law, the sacrifices. He was that sacrifice. And you see, for, for, for three and a half years, he was followed by, you see, these uh, 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 Hebrew uh, scribes and Pharisees and priests and rulers. And they constantly, you see, challenged him. And, and you see, and, and they could never trip him up. They could never find anything that they could righteously accuse him of. And then the fulfillment of that, you see, and we all know the story, how that, you see, uh, um, Pilate, who was the uh, uh, Roman uh, 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 council or the Roman, you see, ruler in, in the land of Israel at that time, he questioned Joshua and he finally washed his hands of it and he said i find no fault in this man you see concerning this old covenant you see and concerning the 10 commandments you see yahshua was blameless now he fulfilled all these things you see and brought them to an end now, now remember he said he came to fulfill he came to finish it now you go back there to the children of israel that law was given to israel and, and under the law, you see, it says that if a, if, a, if a woman make a vow, okay, and her husband hear it, and she doesn't keep that vow, he has to take her sin upon him. 
and fulfill that vow. Now we have an example of that here in Florida. We have a marital property state. If my wife went out and bought herself a new car and I agreed to it and she decided not to make payments anymore, guess who has to fulfill that covenant or that agreement? Yours truly, okay? I would have to fulfill that, you see, because I'm her husband. So here's Joshua, okay? Now go over to Jeremiah 31, 31, please. Jeremiah 31, 31. You know, folks, we could go on day and night about this, about how, how that old covenant was fulfilled and how Joshua finished it, you see, and, and brought it to an end, you see. Now, he, you see, that, see, that was Yahweh himself in that body. And, and that Israel made a covenant with, with Yahweh. And Yahweh was a husband unto her. And that's what it's talking about here in Jeremiah 31, 31. So read Jer Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, please. the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now he's going to make a new covenant. All right. Because he had already made an old covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah back there with Moses and the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. So he's going to, he, so this is a prophecy by Jeremiah. Okay. And, and he's saying that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Now, this new covenant is not according. Is that what you read, Carol? It's not, not according. according. Right. That's right. So if, okay, so let's just take this, you see, simply again. If the new covenant is not like the old covenant, and the old covenant had water baptisms, and circumcisions, and ceremonies, and Passovers, and Ten Commandments, if the new covenant is not like the old one, that means the new covenant cannot have physical circumcisions, physical priesthood, physical water baptisms. You see, physical suppers and sacrifices, physical Ten Commandments, you see, all those things, you see, would not be under the New Covenant if the New Covenant is not like the Old Covenant. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. Now, did it say some of them break? It said they break. They is plural. That means, folks, everybody under that law, you see, including you and me, okay, because we tried to keep it even though we weren't asked to, and we weren't able to do that either, okay, that, you see, you see, it, okay, read that again for me, please. Which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. So we broke it, okay, even though he was a husband unto them. Now, under the law, since the husband, if the, if, the, if the wife make a vow and Israel was the bride and Yahweh was the husband, as he's saying here, he was a husband unto that nation of Israel, okay? He has to come in and he has to fulfill it. He has to finish it, okay? He has to, to bring in that new covenant. He has to get rid of the old and he does this by keeping them. So he kept all those laws without blame. He, see, according to the, the Ten Commandments, he was blameless. Okay, he was circumcised on the eighth day, as Karen brought out, you see, according to the law. He was baptized, you see, in, you see, in fulfillment of, of, of the law. Okay, now John was the, the son of the high priest, you see, and it was the high priest, you see, that baptized the, the low priest. So it's all these things you can work with is the fulfillment of the law. He was the lamb in the Passover, okay? When he said, this is my body, eat of my body, drink of my blood, he was fulfilling that Passover lamb. Didn't they eat the blood and, and you, you see, or drink the blood and eat Eat that, you see, the, the, that lamb under that old covenant. 
when he was saying those things, you see, he was fulfilling that Passover supper and he was the, the lamb itself, okay? And, and you see, under that Passover supper, they were to keep it every year, you see, uh, uh, according to, you see, uh, uh, I have five minutes, okay? According to that law, they were supposed to keep that, you see, that, that Passover supper, uh, uh, you see, yearly. You see, and so Yahshua comes in and he fulfilled that Passover. He was that lamb, you see, and and in 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 they they were they were told to keep that law in memorial of Yahweh. So when Yahshua says, Keep this in remembrance of me, he's not telling them to, to keep doing this Passover, he's fulfilling the actual words that Yahweh said to Israel when the Passover was instituted. You see, he was that actual lamb. And when he said, do this in remembrance of me, it's because back there under the law, Yahweh said to them, you see, to keep it in remembrance or in mem memorial of him. Okay, now go over to uh, uh, Colossians, uh, the second chapter. Um, let me find that and so tell you where to start. Okay. I hope I hope that you can see, you see, that that old covenant, you see, it was fulfilled. And you see, what happens is, is that mystery of iniquity, he steps in there. And when Yahweh says it's ended, you see, when Yahshua was on the cross and said, it is finished, he didn't say, I am finished. People never stopped to ask, what did he mean by it is finished? Did he mean supper's finished or you see or he didn't say i am finished he said it is finished what was finished was that old covenant it was brought to an end okay now uh colossians 2 and uh yeah pick it up at, at um pick it up at, at oh yeah at 10 we, we're running out of time colossians 2 and 10 and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Now you're circumcised now, you see, because see, Yahshua brought in a new covenant. Now the old covenant was physical. It was natural. It was carnal. And Yahshua brought in a new covenant, you see, and that you are, you see, you are circumcised now, but that circumcision isn't made with the physical hands. You see, as, as Karen brought out, you are circum he is now a Jew that is one that is one that is circumcised inwardly, and that's circumcisions of the heart. You see, and, and she read that over there in Romans the second chapter. Okay. So this circumcision, we are circumcisions with the circumcision made without hands. It's a spiritual circumcision. Now, circumcision is a removing of the flesh, of the foreskin of the penis, which is called the head. You see, and so you see, we are. Uh, uh, in these classes, through the preaching of this gospel, you are circumcised. Like she said, that we're circumcised daily. You see, things are being cut away. You see, carnal ways of thinking. You see, things that, you see, for, you, hatred, invariance, in malice. You see, someone could, you see, there was an example I wanted to get where there was a rich young ruler who asked Joshua, okay, we didn't get it, it was in Matthew, um, we, I, I, I had to skip over it, but you see, there was a rich young ruler who asked Joshua, how do I, how do I get eternal life? You see, and he said to keep Yahweh's commandments because you see, it was still under the law. And the, and the man said, I have done this from my youth. And Joshua said, well, if you want to be perfect, okay, he didn't say well, but you know, I'm implying that it kind of was implied. He said, well, but if thou shall be perfect, he said, give all that you have to the poor and follow me, okay? And, and, and the, 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 the rich young man left because he had great substance and he couldn't do that. Because Yahshua said in another place, you see, he was asked, what are the greatest commandments under the law, the great, greatest commandment? And he said to love Yahweh with all your heart, with all your soul and all your mind. See, you can only do that with his spirit within you, you see? And the second, he says, is like unto it, and that is to love your neighbor. Uh, you see, as yourself. And you see, this yet rich young ruler could not give away his substance to his neighbor. So he did not love his neighbor. 
you see. So you see this covenant that we have now, you're 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 circumcised spiritually. That so the physical way of thinking is gotten rid of. You see that carnal way of thinking. Okay. All right. Keep going. Okay. Uh, 11. 11. 11. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of the Messiah. Keep going. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of Yahweh, who hath raised him from the dead. Let's skip down to 14. 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So we're out of time, but you see, Yahshua blotted out those old ordinances that was against us. They were contrary to us. We just couldn't keep them. And he nailed them to the cross and that's where they ended. That's where all those things under that old law ended. And he's brought in a spiritual covenant where we're washed spiritually in our hearts and our minds. We are circumcised in our hearts and our minds. And then we are partaking of, you see, that lamb, or that is his spirit, because he is the lamb. And the lamb is within you now. So um, out of time, uh, we'll, we can get into this some more. I, I hope you got something out of it, uh, you see. Uh, um, th thank you so much for your attention. And all praises belong to Yahshua through, or Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Okay, that concludes our lecture for this evening. Uh, do we have any announcements? Okay, we hold classes here on Zoom on Wednesday from 7 to 9 and on Sunday from 11 to 1. Um, if you have any questions for the speakers, please hold on to after the doxology and you can talk to them at that time. May we all rise for the doxology. Doxology is taken from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power. Both for all times, now and ever, let us all say, Hallelujah.